What am I working with? Dan, you have to take a, a finger. I feel for you all. You can do that. You'll only lose by 20. <laughs> It's incredibly boring. How is that yeah, boring? Uh, Carry on. Shut up, you. <laughs> if anybody mentions Taylor Swift, it's a straight red card and a two-pod ban. We got everything right last week. Yeah, cruised it last week. I'm pretty sure I only got one wrong. Professional, one wrong. Unbelievable. I tell you what, I tell you what. It's Hello, yeah. welcome back to part two of Utter Punts. If you're watching on YouTube, this is the second of our three podcast episodes this week. If you're listening wherever you get your podcasts from, then this is a continuation of episode one. With me, we've got Paul from Good Teams Win, Great Teams Cover, and Dave and Ollie, regular punts. And Paul, it's your time to shine, Mr. Redman. Uh, you've bought us a talking point. In fact, you've bought us a couple. Um, where do you want to start? Uh, let's start with the Bucks. Bucks and Lions, I think that's a great place to start. Uh, a fantastic game on Sunday. So, yeah, it seems a good place to start. That works for me. Um, I, I quite enjoyed this, I'm going to be honest. And I enjoyed it because uh, it's my favourite thing in the world when a load of experts all tell you that something's going to happen and then the entirely opposite thing happens. It was great, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It was a, a week like that across the whole of the NFL, really. The underdogs shone um, in spots all across the the, the weekend, um, all across Sunday, especially. But this, well, I think, was probably the most impressive of the of, of the wins. The uh, Buccaneers going to to Detroit to beat the Lions. Um, the Buccaneers who were really banged up, and the expectation was that Lions had kind of carved them, carved that defense up. There was no. Antoine Winfield, there was no Clyde Canty on the D-line, Vita Vea, huge for the Buccaneers, went out partway through the game, and yet this Buccaneers defence stood up massively, and time after time when the Lions were knocking on the door, um, the Bucs just were, managed to make key plays in key moments to, to, to hold them, and defence did an outstanding job for, for Tampa, and then Baker Mayfield, who's had a fantastic start to the season, was great for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last year, had another one of those showings. The stat line wouldn't suggest it. Um, I think he was 185 yards, a touchdown and an interception. But he made the plays when Tampa needed the most. You know, whether it was to use his legs to escape pressure, to run for first downs, to keep drives going, and even run in a touchdown, which was very impressive. Um, you know, he's a he's clearly very nippy Baker Mayfield still after all these years in the NFL. But just a, an outstanding road win. Um, Got a bit of revenge for, for the Lions beating them in the playoffs, a divisional round of the playoffs in a close game. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers look like they're going to keep that momentum going that they built in 2023. Um, you know, they own that division and it looks like they're going to continue to have a successful season. Injuries, they, they may struggle with if they continue, but they're, you know, the position that they're in with Todd Bowles as head coach has got offence and defence making the plays that they need to. And if they can learn how to win these tight games... They could have a chance of, of uh, getting to the playoffs and winning playoff game, you know, at least one playoff game or playoff games again. That's a long way down the road, but very, very impressive from from Tampa, a team that I had written off. I didn't think they'd be able to replicate what they did last year. Uh, I was one of those. I wouldn't call myself an expert. But I was heavy on the Lions for sure. The Lions, I thought the Lions were going to kill the Bucks, um, and it just doesn't seem to be going that way for the Lions at the minute. You know, struggling through games, Goff making some uncharacteristic mistakes I think from what we saw from, from last year and um, the Lions just seem to be struggling to start the season um, that all may, may change but uh, very impressed with Tampa Dave you're going to get your opportunity to be smug in just a moment so you just keep that smug face attached to your to your um, visage and we'll be with you very very shortly Ollie the question for you Lions one touchdown from seven red zone trips against the Bucks. was it the Lions not performing as well as they should have done? Was it Jared Goff maybe not being what we thought it would be? Or was it that Bucks D? Well, first of all, I'm angry with Mr. Goff because he's my, in my fantasy team. Um, <laughs> and he only got me eight points, whereas the mighty Sam, slinging Sam Darnold, who's on my bench, got 21 points. So it's clear who's the better quarterback. But anyway, uh, <laughs> no, I, I think it, it's elements of... In American football, it's hard to say whether it's the defense or the offense because it depends on the momentum during the game. 
God, is, don't say that to Dan. Jesus, he's got well, a problem I'm, with I'm, momentum. I'm, yeah, yeah but know, that, I've even tried to explain it. So, so momentum occurs when one team has a spike in testosterone. That is why when they do tests on players after games, they will find a disparity in testosterone levels. It's a real thing. And what's weird is home team players before games always have slightly more testosterone in their blood than, than away players. I, 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 like I, Dr. Dave. Dr. Defend home. Dr. Dave this. strikes again. Uh, I, anyway, we've, we've sidetracked Ollie. Go on, Ollie, carry on. But there has to be a question about Detroit. First of all, they narrowly beat Los Angeles Rams in the first game, 26-20, in overtime, which was basically David Montgomery pounding all the way down the field and winning them that game. And then this Los Angeles Rams team goes and loses 41-10 to the Arizona Cardinals, who finished in the top five draft picks last year. And they added Marvin Harrison, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., granted, and have Kyler Murray back, which is great. But when you look at which team's been doing well... Are the Lions a bit... I think they're suffering a little bit from just missing out. I said this to people after last year. Losing that NFC Championship game to the Niners, I think, hurts a lot. Obviously, getting there is a brilliant achievement, but is there a slight mentality of, can we run it back? Can we do that again? Because they were so extraordinary last year. They broke so many records for that franchise that had struggled for over 20, 30 years. Is there that element of, we're tired and I think there may be a case that I love Dan Campbell I love the Detroit Lions but I think I think the Buccaneers were more organised they deserve the win and I think Todd Bowles is probably the most underrated coach in the league other than Kevin O'Connell to disagree with you to be honest Look, here's just a little example uh, Paul sort of gave us a heads up that he was going to be talking about this so I thought um, I, I would grab a little bit of game footage this is from uh, the NFL on X and this is where they were great the Bucks. This is where they were absolutely brilliant. All game long, did not give up anything, and and really impressive across the piece, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. And it was just that piece of there, the four point four point lead to defend, and the, the the lines not only came once but twice in the red zone to, to you know to 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 get this to get this winning score, and just fantastic defensive performance. It just key key moments. And I think there's a there's a little bit of because the Bucks end up giving the ball back again. They they when they got the ball back after the first the first fourth uh, fourth down that they managed to hold, they give the ball back again within seconds. And and to to put the defense out there and manage to do that again late in the game as, as time's running out, um, you know, a, a fantastic win in it and a statement win. Just apart on, on the Lions that that Ollie was discussing there, it's it's almost like you know the. The hunt has become the hunted. I think now with the Lions, last year there was an expectation on them being good, and they were, and so close as you mentioned to get into to get into the Super Bowl. Now there's the real expectation for the Lions to go in to go and win a championship, and and that that so that's a different pressure, and a pressure that the Detroit Lions are absolutely not used to not used to having. Um, and I think a little bit, especially in this game, in the, in the game against the Rams as well in Week One, seems to be getting a little bit too cute. The Lions on offense. Dan, uh, Dan Campbell and, and the Lions have built this team in the trenches. We saw Aiden Hutchinson on the defense, almost single handedly left the game. It was in, in crazy, you know, crazy just how dominant he was. But it's almost like they're not trusting this offensive line that they've built to just play that level of football, like we saw in overtime, that one drive against the Rams, where we're just going to take over and make the plays we need to to win this game and just ground and ground and ground. And they just seem to have stepped away from that a little bit in this one. Um, and, and ultimately it cost them. So, yeah, I think the, the, the Lions should be okay and they'll get back on track. But, yeah, real excited to see what happens with, with Tampa the rest of the way. I think Dave, I know, I, 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 he's, he's primed and ready to go. I'm looking at his face. He's, he's, you, you almost called it. Well, um, I, I just like Baker. I mean, like, the thing is, in, for the 2018 draft, um, there's a lot of talk about whether or not it should be Sam Barnold or Baker Mayfield, number one overall for Browns. I much preferred Baker, mainly because at the time, the I still do listen to them sometimes, they're great, they're great blokes, but at, at the time I was very much listening to a couple of people called the Draft Dudes, um, Joe Marino and Carl Krabs, who I think they do locked on NFL team building or something now, but it's, it's, it's a decent listen. But Carl Krabs was very much a fan of, of Baker Mayfield. Um, and basically, it was based on his accuracy uh, and, and his ability to, to get throw off on time. Um, 
and that that kind of influenced my thinking definitely going into the draft. Um, I had concerns with Sam Darnold based on the, 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 the sample size available. I think he'd only started for one season. Um, but both those guys now have been in the league for six years and they both look like they might be having a career uh, this year to start with anyway. Um, now, Baker is... Obviously, the Vikings have got Darnold for £10 million this year, but we're paying £28 million for Kirk on dead money. So, in reality, QB cost £38 million. We don't get that coming back to us until next year. But Baker, I believe his contract is yeah, it's, it's ridiculously small considering the level he's playing at currently. Um, which is he signed a three-year, 100, mil, 100 million contract, worth up to 115 million with incentives, and only 50 million guaranteed. So he's probably playing for about 35 million a year at the moment, and he's probably a fringe top 10 to 15 QB. But he's getting paid like someone who's about 25th. Um, and that basically means that Tampa Bay can afford to, you know, have, have a bit more depth in the roster. You're right, they had all of those people injured, but their depth stepped up um, admirably, I, I, I thought. Now, the Lions have had their injury history issues as well. Um, and Goff did have a good down game. But isn't Arm and Ross and Brown, whenever I see him, he looks to be limping. And he, he's a key player for them. Um, so it's not that surprising that, that, that they sort of stuttered. But for me, what this comes down to, and I promised Jim I, I'd mention this, um, those, those contracts, so Baker, 35 million a year, Darnold, 10 million a year, um, Deshaun Watson, <laughs> 55 million a year, uh, pass a rating of 78.2 in, in his Browns career. He's thrown across three seasons now, for 2,572 yards, he has managed 15 touchdowns and 11 interceptions in 14 games for the Browns in his entire career. So, that is definitely the epitome of overpaying for a quarterback. Um, Good news for the Browns is the latest drama with, with Mr. Deshaun Watson that has led to them removing the clause that means he can't get his contract voided if he gets suspended by the NFL. So he now Light can. At the end of a tunnel, yes. So, so right, so, so any more trans... Well, I, I think it's perfectly reasonable. Any more transgressions, any more bringing the franchise or the league into disrepute and you can have your contract torn up and thrown away, it's absolutely the right decision in, in terms of Deshaun Watson. If you're anything like us at Utter Punts, we love the fantasy games surrounding the NFL, but sometimes they're a bit too focused on their American audiences. That's why we were blown away when the Fantasy Game Day app rolled into town. A weekly fantasy game with player value in pounds totally dedicated to the NFL's UK audience. There's insights and analysis and plenty of opportunity to compete with your friends, but the best bit, weekly cash prizes. Use code PUNTS when you sign up for a free entry after you play your first week. Just to bring it back to the Bucks uh, briefly before we before we move on again, because I know that um, Paul's got something else that we can talk about before we before we finish this part of the podcast. Um, and this might be a very naive question. So again, if it if it is one of those questions that I ask where everybody goes, "Don't be a dick, Liam," you you then have to tell me to not be a dick. But how much impact did? Tom Brady have at the Bucks that Baker has then taken over and improved upon, or am I barking up entirely the wrong tree? No, mate. Tom Brady's god. Um, anything he's involved with turns to gold. Uh, quite frankly, Tom, love you, love your commentary, <laughs> just love you, mate. Jesus. Yeah, just leave, sure leave, you, leave your Birmingham I'll, I'll City pay, I'll pay, at I'll, the door. I'll pay this one. Um, I was one of the people, and I'll admit it completely, because I have a, a really good friend of mine who's a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan, uh, and I was taking the mick completely after Brady had left and said, you're going to be crap, basically, because you've got Baker Mayfield. I I was wrong, and I'll own that. Uh, but, you know, obviously Mr. Brady is the GOAT, as Dave alluded to, the best of all time. Birmingham City Ultra, the finest to ever grace small heat. But other than that... Um, no, uh, back to your question. 
I think it's Baker taking his own fran. He's finally found a franchise where he's settled, somewhere he's happy. First of all, Miami's a lot nicer than Cleveland. Johnny Mantell <laughs> is someone who will agree with that. Um, he's found a franchise where he's wanted. He had a good start, a very solid start there. He's got a very good, underrated head coach in Todd Bowles. Very good players around him. A, a Hall of Famer, first ballot wide receiver, in my opinion, in Mike Evans. And a great supporting wide receiver in Chris Godwin. A solid defence. They'd won the Super Bowl recently. Of course, Brady um, had an effect on that franchise as a whole by bringing the Lombardi Trophy on. But then in his last season, you know, it wasn't exactly, you know, brilliant. It was all right. I, I, I guess my point there is... How much of the signings that happened because of Brady, how much of the roster building that happened because of Brady has had an impact on what the tools that Baker has available to him? Well, first of all, you've lost Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski, who were two of the key figures of winning that Super Bowl. Uh, let's not forget Gronkowski, probably the greatest tight end of all time. Also lost him. Also lost Tom. Uh, maybe Tony Gonzalez for that tight end spot. But I think so. Um, either way I don't think so I, I don't think Tom Brady has an effect on this current Tampa Bay Buccaneers regime I think it's Baker's taken it as his own he's found somewhere that can unleash that potential of what he was which he should have been the first oh, he was the first overall pick sorry wasn't he yeah the first overall pick and uh, you know when you feel wanted when you feel loved and when you're having a bit of success and you build momentum which is a very important thing in the NFL and in football, our regular football in Britain, I, I, it, it all comes together. And I don't think that's because of Brady. I think that's a separate regime. That's a separate thing. That's just bringing in the greatest of all time and winning a trophy. There's okay, a, a, I, I'm there's down. There's a brilliant Let, quote, quote, Liam, um, from the Browns when, when Baker was leaving, which I think doesn't age very well for them. And that is, yeah... Uh, We've let Baker Mayfield walk because we want an adult in charge of the team. Well, also growing up, and you guys yeah. fixed uh, Sean Watson. Just final final word on this particular question, which is uh, looking very much like "Shut up, Liam! You don't know what you're talking no. about," which is absolutely fine. Um, I'm going to go to the guy that has no skin in this game at all uh, because he doesn't support Birmingham City. So, uh, Paul. Can I please have your thoughts on the question that I posed? Because I'm not entirely sure that I can trust these two Tom Brady sycophants. Well, we just said he didn't influence it. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? I, I, uh, sorry, let me take you back. I said that he did, but jokingly, and then Ollie explained that he hadn't. But like, yeah, and you, there we and go. you both, <laughs> you both called him the goat. I believe the phrase was the best thing to ever grace small Heath. So let's let let's move it to somebody that doesn't no, have any skin in the it's game. It's not that high a bar. Other than <laughs> and Jude. So the two, uh, two the other two people oh, who might be right. running are now called Saints. Yeah, fair enough, uh, Paul. Yeah, I mean, he was sat with he was sat with uh, Bex on Monday night, though, honest. I don't know if I can be completely impartial. But, uh, <laughs> they're really good mates, and uh, Beckham seems to have a little bit of love for. I know Ferguson does. Describe Birmingham oh. City as a real football. Can we player. stop talking about Birmingham City, please? No more NFL no more. podcast. Mate, mate, Go on, trending. Paul. Carry on. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, in terms of fact, like they, they obviously brought in so many uh, veterans would be the kind way to describe it to build that team that won the championship. Um, and they've had a real turnover in the roster. A lot of it still is a relatively old old roster or an aging roster, and they've had to work in the last few years of of having a lot of these guys go. Whether it was some of the old uh, old linemen, you know, see Murray Bats, Farnett, and others go. So yeah, I think they've managed it re managed it really really well. I think the key to Mayfield's success um, in in, in Tampa is they just let him be Baker Mayfield, and I think that's key. He's some a quarterback who tends to feel his way through games he's not you know he'll he's you know he's, 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 we talked about small quarterbacks earlier he's not he's not a big guy but he'll go try and run over a linebacker you don't want your quarterback doing that but I think it's okay to let Baker do that because that's part of part of how he plays now he gets a, a feeling for the game and and builds not to use that word but build momentum for his team just about making these the, these plays so yeah I think they've just allowed him to, to be him whereas at the Browns I think they were trying to rein him in a lot and, and, and fit him into a system and, and that just doesn't work for, for him he's a bit of an old school gunslinger style quarterback I think Baker Mayfield and you've just got to let it happen sometimes it'll be disastrous but if you can get in the groove good things tend to happen 
Yeah. He um he thrives under a bit of duress as well, doesn't he? Like he's a bit like Joe Joe Burrow like that. He'll quite happily get sacked five times, which I think he was in this game, sacked five times, and he still managed to throw five passing touchdowns. So his ability to sort of bounce back from any kind of adversity that he's facing is is one of his big strengths. Yeah, he, he, I mean Paul makes an excellent point. You got to let him be himself at the end yeah. of the day. But one of the key things I I didn't mention as well in regards to the Brady question was before he was at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he had some time at the Los Angeles Rams under Sean McVay, gaining some experience under him, one of the best uh, head coaches in the NFL. Him, alongside Kevin O'Connell, made Matthew Stafford a uh, Super Bowl winning quarterback. And Baker had some good time there. And I remember when he came in uh, as the backup and uh, Stafford was injured ahead of him and he went in and played. And he won a couple games for the Rams and he played really well. And everyone jokingly said, "Can apart from Dave, can Baker be a good, solid starting quarterback? And then obviously Brady's left Tampa. They needed someone. And clearly Todd Bowles has the, had the same thought process as Dave where, you know what, we let this guy be himself, as Paul said. We have a real shot of having a quarterback, a cheap that is actually really good and underrated. Who um? There's a couple of little things that I, I, I really feel the need to comment on because mm-hmm. they're they're brilliant from from the books. So, do you know who the current OC is for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? It's a guy called Liam Cohn, who was Baker Mayfield's OC very briefly at the Rams when Baker played in those games. Uh, that's right. interesting. So a, li- a little bit of a thing there, and the other thing, Ollie mentioned that you. I think I think it was you that said it, Liam, where you said that he's really good under duress. Of all of the different stats I've seen across with, with massive sample sizes, the greatest correlation that I've seen in terms of coming out of college to being a successful QB in in the NFL is whether or not your completion percentage drops off under pressure and by how much. And if you look, every single quarterback that does well had games where they showed that they were able to thrive under pressure. So CJ Strouds with the Ohio State game against, uh, I think it was the Alabama Crimson Tide, they lost that game. But my God, Stroud was under pressure every drop back and kept finding completions. I think he threw five touchdowns in that game. It, Baker specialised in it at Ohio State. And the, the best two quarterbacks in this draft who have started this year in terms of the, the, the smallest drop-off under pressure. Do you know who they are? Anyone? Go, go on. Anyone want to say? JJ McCarthy. Yeah, one of them. And the other? Sam Donald. No, no, in this draft. In this draft. Oh, oh, sorry. Bo Nix. No. Caleb, no, definitely not Caleb Williams. <laughs> Caleb's got the, Caleb has the biggest drop off. Oh, yeah, that, that doesn't surprise me. me. Massively. Um, the, the, the player that it is hasn't been seen yet. He's currently warming the bench behind Kirk Cousins. Wait for Michael Williams Jr. Oh, interesting. Interesting, interesting. Uh, right. Um, two things. First thing, Ollie may have said that Baker Mayfield was enjoying his time uh, in Miami. We as a podcast would like to suggest uh, that we do understand that the difference between Tampa Bay and Miami is about 300 miles, which is the distance from Scotland to bloody Cornwall. He's got a private jet and he spends his time in Miami. Uh, is that what, I is know that what you're... Is a different place. I know Jacksonville's a different place. Where, as well. Whether or not that is true, offices down on the beach <laughs> remains to be seen. Uh, look, uh, the other one is: Can every? Uh, uh, I know Paul can definitely give me a one-word answer. This is more directed at Dave and Ollie. All right, one word, one word, either yes or no. Okay, pick yes or pick no. I guarantee you a one-word answer. I don't believe you. Um, are we looking at a career best season for Baker Mayfield? Paul? Yes. Ollie? Yes. Dave? Maybe. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's always going to be the difficult one, isn't he? Uh, look, that um, that conversation has taken a little bit longer than I anticipated. So, uh, Paul, we're going to keep your uh, we're going to keep your talking point in reserve for probably next week, which was the difference between uh, the two Harbour brothers at the moment, which could get even more interesting by the time we get to next week so we'll just keep that one in reserve and we will give you the shout out uh, as and when we do it uh, if you're watching this on youtube this is the end of uh, podcast number two so again don't forget to hit subscribe like share hit the notifications bell make sure you send us to a friend it would be absolutely brilliant and we will see you tomorrow for podcast number three if you're listening on spotify or itunes or wherever you get your podcast from we will be back with you right after this.